Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Today I'm going to talk about kind of a boring topic. I don't know anybody that really gets excited about talking about grease. But if you'll grease your equipment, it'll last longer. And if you're new to tractors and equipment, it's important for you to know about how to use a grease gun and how to grease your stuff. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to tell you 12 things you may or may not know about grease and greasing and grease fittings. Our cars have gone to seal bearings by and large, and there's not a lot of greasing done on cars. And you're probably asking, why, why do I have to grease my tractor? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, if we went to seal bearings on tractors, it'd cost money to redesign them. And, and uh, number two, a lot of farmers actually like greasing, greasable fittings, because they know they're, they're taking care of and there's just a mental thing there. I don't trust these, these uh, sealed bearings. And so I think we're stuck with what we got. And the ma main reason we've got it, it's cheap. It's already designed in and it would cost a lot of money to, to redesign it. So we've got the greasable bearings and we're probably stuck with them on our tractors for a long time. It's not that big a deal to grease them, but nobody likes to do it. So today I'm going to tell you 12 things you may not know about about greasing. Number one, these little fittings that the grease goes in, what are they called? Well, a lot of farmers mispronounce it. It's a Zerk, a Z-E-R-K. And, and my neighbor Chuck claims he's related to the guy that came up with the Zerk fitting. And I, I, I more I've researched, I think he probably is. The guy's name was Oscar Zerkowitz, or Oscar Zerk, and he lived in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and he worked for Nash Motor Company, and he came up with the little fittings, but I've heard it called ZERT, Z-U-R-T or Z-E-R-T, and some people spell it Z-E-R-C, but it's actually Z-E-R-K, a grease zerk. That's the fitting that the grease goes in. That's number one. Number two, let's talk about how the zerk works. What's going on inside of that? There's a ball with a spring behind it, a little tiny ball with a spring behind it. And when, when there's no grease gun on that fitting, that ball is out at the front and it keeps the grease from coming out. When you put that grease coupler on, it pushes that ball back and allows you to apply grease through that fitting. So that's, that's how it works. Number three, what's grease do? Well, grease is actually oil with a thickener in it, and I'm going to post a link to a video at the end that explains it way better than I can. But that oil is designed to come out of that bearing as the bearing is used. So you have a bearing spinning, and, and you have a wear place, and that oil is designed to come out and, and lubricate that fitting. So that's what's going on with, with a, a, a bearing and grease in it. It's, it's, it's oil is coming out and that's why you need to replace that, that grease in there so you'll have more oil to come out. And if you don't, you'll have excessive wear. Number four, what if I have a grease fitting that won't take grease? In other words, I'm, I'm trying to apply grease with my lever gun or my pistol and, and, and the grease won't go in. What's going on there? It could be that there's a little bit of rust accumulated down in there. It could be that there's been some dirt or grease get in there behind that that's keeping that ball from coming out. And it could be just some of the manufacturers, even on a new tractor, are putting the cheapest grease certs on these tractors. And sometimes even a new tractor will have one or two grease certs that won't take grease. And so you have to replace those grease certs. And I know this, I sell the lube shuttle grease gun on my website. And, and anytime you have a problem with it and, and the grease fitting won't take grease, everybody always blames a grease gun. But a lot of times it's that cheap grease fitting and, and even on new tractors and even some of the major manufacturers have, have cut costs and they're using cheap grease fittings and you just have to change those and put a quality grease fitting in there and our grease zerk and then then it'll take grease but if you've got a zerk that's not taking grease replace that thing and that'll be a subject for another video number five if you've got a grease fitting that you grease and when you pull that grease gun back there's a, a lot of grease comes out of it that means you've got a little bit of debris in there and, and it's important to keep it clean around those grease fittings before you, you grease. If, if they're all covered with nasty stuff and you put that grease gun on there, you can put foreign material and all those components in there are very, very small and just a little bit of dirt and grime in there, or chunks of, 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 of used grease or, or whatever, uh, it can, can really screw up your grease search. So make sure your area is clean and if it's shooting grease back at you after you pull the grease gun off, you may need to replace that grease search. Now it's normal to get just a little bit of grease coming out, but if it continues to weep out after the grease gun is disconnected, you may need to replace that zerk. 
Number six, not all grease fittings need to be greased at the same intervals. Certain grease fittings on a tractor you just touch maybe once a year because they're not used that much. If you're using your loader a lot, you may want to grease it more than the recommended intervals. On your brush hog and your tiller and, and anything with a PTO shaft, those U-joints in the PTO need greased often. I, I recommend do it every time you use it uh, just to be safe. But uh, the more it spins and the more pressure it's under, the more often you need to grease it. Number six, how do I know when I'm done greasing? If you didn't grow up on a farm or you've never been around grease fittings, how, how do I know when I've got enough grease in there? Well, that's simple. When it starts coming out, you're done. When you start seeing grease come out of the grease area, you're, you're, you're attached to the uh, grease zerk, and, and when you start having grease come out, you're done. And a lot of times I'll be trying to watch that and, and the grease will be coming out on the back side and, and I look around and there's like a grease slug. It looks like a, a slug that's grease that's all come out and that's just wasted grease. So you want to stop before that. And that brings me to number seven. How do I know if I can't see the grease zerk and the area that I'm putting grease in? How do I know when, when I've, I've got enough grease there? Well, if you can't see it, a lot of times you can hear it. And, and when you're pumping, it'll make a crackling sound when that, that old grease material is starting to come out. It'll, it'll sound. Or if, you, if you've got a pistol grip. Something like that. Okay, number eight. I had a question from a viewer that asked, I've got one bad hand. Uh, a lot of us that are getting older, and a lot, of, a lot of us that own tractors are, are my age or older, and, and um, we've got carpal tunnel, we've, we've worked on computers our whole life or, or with keyboards, or we've got a, uh, had an injury where we've got one bad hand. Can you grease with one hand, and what would, what would I recommend? You definitely can. Get a quick coupler, like this safe lock device, and lock it on with your good hand, and a pistol grip grease gun, like this lube shuttle pistol grip. And then you can lock it on and just let it hang there, it won't hurt anything. And then pick up the grease gun with the other hand and you can grease. Number nine, I get asked this all the time, what's the best kind of grease? Well again, I'm going to post a link at the end that goes into way more detail on what type of grease to use. But for 95% of us with small tractors and maybe we grease our lawnmower, get a basic multi-purpose grease, a good, a good quality basic multi-purpose grease. If you're using a combine or a skid loader or a, um, a hay bale or something that takes a lot of pressure and you've got you're running all day long uh, putting pressure on those bearings then you may need to move up to a synthetic or a polyurea or something like that but for most of us get the cheap not the cheapest of the cheap get, get a good quality multi-purpose grease and you'll be fine but I am going to post a link to a video at the end you ought to watch if you're wondering about that. Number 10 if I took delivery of my new tractor, how do I know if it's been greased? Well, most of the time those grease zerks in the painting process when the tractor is put together will get a little paint on the top of them. And you can look at that grease zerk and if it's still got paint on the top of it, it's not been greased. And normally, I've worked in a dealership, you have your bottom rung of the totem pole person servicing the new tractors getting and that's not the way it should be but the way it is at most dealerships especially in the busy season you you have a high school or college kid that you've hired over the summer and you tell them to prep it so i would definitely when you get a new tractor go around to all the grease certs and make sure they don't have paint on the top of them if you got paint on the top of them uh, you probably need to hit it with a grease gun Number 11, if you're shopping for a used tractor, seeing a grease zerk that's dirty, that has a lot of grease around it and, and grease that's everywhere on the tractor, that's a good thing. That means the person that owned the tractor before you knew how to use a grease gun and kept the thing greased. Maybe maybe overdid it a little bit. I, I'm not sure you can really over grease a tractor. If, if everything is dry and it's all clean and you have no evidence that they've ever greased a tractor, that's bad. But if you can see grease residue in a lot of places, they've taken care of that tractor and that's a good sign if you're buying a used tractor. Finally today, number 12, if you do a lot of greasing, consider an electric or battery powered grease gun. 
Uh, that's what we used in dealerships, either, either battery powered or pneumatic powered, and that, that makes the process a whole lot better. So if you do a lot of greasing, like if you've got a backhoe or a, uh, a skid loader or a hay bale or something like that, get, get one of those battery powered grease guns. It's a lot less grief. A lube shuttle offers one with a screw in canister, and that is the Cadillac of all grease guns, an electric lube shuttle with a screw in canister, and that will make your life a lot easier. They're not cheap, but, uh, but they will really make you not hate greasing. But whatever you do, get a good quality grease gun. And again, I, I sell on my website the Lube Shuttle system, which has a screw-in canister. It doesn't leak out a lot of grease, and it's a really nice design. It's German-built, uses a lot of pressure, and it will get grease in because of the pressure and, and the premium design. It'll get grease in all the areas around those bearings where you need it. And, and I highly recommend getting a, a Lube Shuttle. It's a game changer. It's a, it's a great product. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd be honored. Click the Mike Face icon and check the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. If you'd like to purchase the Lube Shuttle or the Safe Lock Quick Lock Grease Coupler, go to my website in the Tractor Fun Store right here. And here's a video about different types of grease that you really should watch if you like this video. Thanks for watching.